memorandum to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, as we gather here for this commissioner meeting, we ask that you fill our city, county, and political leaders with wisdom, understanding, discernment, knowledge, and knowledge. We ask that you grant us favor, increase our faith, so those we serve will see your excellence in us. We ask you, Lord, to help us cast aside all pride and arrogance among us as leaders, if there be any. Lord, we ask that you direct us and put, up, put our hearts and hands to what you have called us to do, that we be mindful that we are doing the things that you have us to do. Father, we ask that you anchor us in your glory and your will. We also ask that you hear our requests. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, is there anyone in the audience who like to come speak to us about anything? All right, see a none, we'll move on. Uh, no appointments for tonight, and then we have one item that needs to be added to the agenda. Carter. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to add uh, discussions of engagement of McCall and associate architects. Uh, to perform a programming study, and that would be added item 4.1. All right, any questions? Okay, um, we need to vote on that, right? To so add, yes, sir. All right, so all in favor, add that. session on April 4th, executive session on April 4th, and regular session on April 10th. So everybody had a chance to review those, so we entertain a motion to approve. So moved. All right, I have a second. Second. All in favor? All right. No public hearings tonight. <coughs> Consent agenda. 7.1 motion to issue a notice of award in the amount of $2,269,661.56 to HTS Construction Incorporated for the EV Hamilton Improvements Phase 1 project and authorize the chairman to execute the construction agreement with funding to come from ARPA funds. 7.2 motion to issue a notice of award in the amount of $1,039,535 to Southern Concrete Construction Company Incorporated for Southern Church Road Bridge Project and authorize the chairman to execute the construction agreement with funding to come from TIA and T-Splice funds. 7.3, motion to approve the relocation of Georgia Power Underground Power Lines at E.B. Hamilton to accommodate the improvements in phase one for a cost of $48,000 in funding to come from ARPA funds. 7.4, motion to authorize the chairman to execute the lease documents from near credit for two backhoes for Annual lease payments of $55,722.77 for three years, with funding to come from the general fund. <coughs> 7.5, motion to issue a letter of support to the Tifton Tip County Disability and Aging Board for Independence. 7.6, motion to correct and identify the funding sources for the purchase of three rescue pumpers from Tony, how do you say that? Tony, <laughs> Tony uh, Incorporated for $1 $644,401 to $1.2 million from ARPA funds and $444,401 from the Fire District Fund. 7.7, 7, motion to approve the alcohol beverage license application submitted by Nahib and Patel for a retail malt beverage package and retail wine package for Johnny LLC located at 5070 Georgia Highway 125. 7.8, motion to authorize staff to submit an application for the ACCG Employee Safety Grant Program to purchase high visibility reflective rain jackets for the Sheriff's Department. Are there any of those items that any commissioners like to remove to be considered singularly? Seeing none, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Commissioner Webb, second. Commissioner Webb. Okay. All in favor? Okay, on the regular agenda, we have appointments to the Greater Tip County Planning and Zoning Commission. 
Mr. Chairman, there's two. Jim Laycock and Dustin Pitts, their terms will end at the end of this month, and both have agreed to serve another term, and I have no other applications on file. Okay. So I open the floor for nominations. I nominate Jim Blacklock. So that we'd be reappointed for a five-year term. We have to do an individual, right? No. I think Since there are no there. other applications, we can do them. Okay, I would like to nominate Jim Laycock <laughs> and Dustin Pitts to a five-year term. Any other nominations? All right, I'll close the floor for nominations and uh, entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we reappoint Jim Laycock Lay <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Dustin <laughs> Pitts. <laughs> do we have a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Okay. Move to 8.2, appointments to the Athletic Advisory Board. Yes, sir. We have three positions that expire at the end of this month. Steve Hyman, Vicki Robinson, and Montoya Crockett. Um, all are willing to serve another three-year term, and I don't have any other applications on file. All right. So there again, because no other applications on file would could nominate all three at one time if you so choose, so I open up four for nominations now. I'd like to nominate Steve Hyman, Dickie Robinson, and Montoya Crockett to the Athletic Advisory Board. Okay, any other nominations? All right, we'll close nominations and uh, ask for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve Steve Hyman, Dickie Robinson, and Montoya Crockett to the Tip County Athletic Advisory Board. Do we have a second? Second. Motion read and seconded. All in favor? Right. Then we have an appointment to the Department of Family and Children's Services Board. Yes, sir. The term for Carol Bell will expire at the end of June of 2023, and Ms. Bell is willing to serve another five-year term. You also have a recommendation letter from Ms. Annie Clark at DFAX about her reappointment, and I have no other applications on file. Okay, so we have another four nominations uh, for the DFAX Board. I'll make a move. Uh, I'd like to nominate Ms. Carol Bell to the Facebook. Okay, any other nominations? All right, we'll close the floor nominations and then ask for a motion. We'll make a motion we nominate Carol Bell to the uh, Facebook. I have a second. Second. Mr. Wood seconded. All in favor? All right. All right, we have an appointment to the Library Board. Ms. Betty Jean Prince unfortunately has had to resign her position on the Library Board. <laughs> Um, I have an application from a Claudia Parker, um, who was forwarded to me by the librarians, Karen Thompson, and I have no other applications on file. All right, so there's enough nominations for appointment to the library board. I make a, want to make a, a motion that we accept Ms. Claudia Parker. Or nominate. 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 Any other Parker. nominations? All right, we'll close this floor for nominations and ask for a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we appoint Ms. Claudia Parker to the library board. All right, a second. Second. Motion has for seconding. All in favor? All right. Now we'll take the added item, the, uh, for the uh, engagement of the call architect for a programming study. Mr. Chairman, is the board, is the board familiar or uh, I guess as I understand it, we, the staff's been looking at uh, utilization of <coughs> current county space, uh, especially with an eye towards uh, expansion and, and uh, updating of some of our facilities. As we have gone, began this process, it quickly became apparent to us that uh, we need some help from folks who that, that's what they, they do. Uh, Tony and I, uh, Chairman uh, and some of the staff have met with uh, McCall and Associates. The reason we, we picked out McCall and Associates is that they're a South Georgia firm, but they have vast experience in uh, renovation of historic buildings, whether that be on a college campus, a lot of renovation of courthouses and new building of courthouses, which is one of the needs that we need to address to include administrative space. So uh, they're, they're 
area of expertise is right from, from where we need. So what the staff's recommending is that the commission approve the staff signing the agreement uh, you see there in, in front of you. Um, the amount for an amount of $24,500 on a comprehensive space utilization program, what they call a programming study, so that we identify what our needs are, we evaluate what our current space is, and we can so that then we can report back to you and you can make uh, a well informed decision before we uh, jump off into to this. You know, we've got money in the current SPLOS, uh, we're staring down the barrel of the next uh, SPLOS. And uh, we think a, an informed decision by the elected body uh, will benefit, give staff guidance and benefit the future of this community. So we ask that you approve that and allow us to uh, start meeting with uh, representatives from uh, from McCall and Associates. Any questions? All right, we have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Reagan seconded. All in favor of approving the call study? All right. Okay, Mr. Carter, any other comments? Yes, sir, just one. I'm going to make my notes right here. Uh, apparently, I'm not going to walk uh, to, to talk in right at the same time, so I have to catch up. Um, of course, I'm, like, yeah, I'm about to kill my iPad, so I'm going to turn it off before I lose what I just did right there. Um, if you need a minute to get ready, I've got something I can present to somebody. Well, yeah, if you'll do that, it'll give me just a minute to uh, get to my notes. Dan Hoover's here with us. I'll get that letter of support that he asked for, so he'll come forward at this time. Yeah. This will run your reputation. Good uh, no. <laughs> so, Dear Mr. Hoover, the Tiff County Board of Commissioners supports your efforts in the formation of the Tifflin Tiff County Disability and Aging Board for Independence. We certainly understand the importance of your mission to promote and enhance the quality of life for people with disabilities. We further understand that this newly created board will advise the county on issues pertaining to the disability community, which could include equal access to programs, housing, facilities, and services. The Tiff County Board of Commissioners looks forward to the service of the Tiff and Tiff County Disability and Aging Board for Independence. Thank you for allowing us to support you in this effort. Thank you, Pam. We appreciate you. Yes, sir. Chairman, I thank you for that brief, you know, little bit of catch my breath to get what I, what I find my notes here. Uh, at, the, at the work session, uh, Commissioner Hughes brought up some questions about eviction laws and, and time uh, as it relates to those. So this this, this morning, uh, the county attorney, myself, Chris Davis, uh, some of his staff, and, and we met together to discuss that. Um, and, you know, right now, I, I can tell you, that, that we have on our local ordinance a requirement that we wait 30 days after that. The tenant property is moved to the curb. We have a 30 day period that we have to allow that to be moved. Uh, that is a self imposed county ordinance. There. So there is no that we can ascertain regulation that requires any given amount of time once it's put on the curb. I've asked the county attorney to, to look into that because the reason that the landlord's putting it. Uh, out of the house is because it's not their property it belongs to the tenant so you know historically what we've done is once it's out there and it's been there for 30 days then, then what, what, what's the legal term you, you use for that well we it's abandoned property then well i don't we we, you know, we treated <coughs> it as a as a responsibility for the landlord to take care of it at that time and we put pressure on them through code enforcement you know so the, the, what i want to look into and approach is you know how can we collapse that time? Because you know, from the day that the notification is given, there's going to be a hearing. And there's at least 15 days, typically 20 days before you have a hearing. Then you get a minimum seven days. So there's the fastest. It looks to me like the shortest timeline from the day that you're aware that you're going to be evicted, and when your stuff may be put out is 21 days. So. So if you're evicted, it's out there in some duration of time. Remembering that the property that's been placed beside the road does not belong to the landlord, it belongs to the tenant. So the tenant technically has, they've got ownership, and there's where 
really has a right to do with the property. So it's not, it's not land the property. So to kind of boil that down to simple terms, uh, the, the seven days right between uh, from the time that the hearing's held and, and, and the judge signs the eviction notice, the landlord can't do anything for those seven days. Once that's the seven days I think you were referencing. Once that seven days has passed and the landlord moves the stuff out of the house and can re, re rent his or release the property, at which time then 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 it becomes the nuisance issue that you were asking about. So what we've got to I've asked Tony to do is to look at that time period for right now because of the local ordinance that's 30 days we've been able, not been able to identify any state requirement that there be any given amount of time but we want to be careful because you know as tony said they've got 21 days so that so when your stuff gets moved out it's not a surprise that's you, you've had seven days since the judge signed the order well, one since you since you since that the service is officially served the first time so you know Generally speaking, you would think with 21 days you would have made arrangements to get yourself moved out if you intended to have it moved out, or if you were just walking away from it. And that's another thing. So what we've got to figure out from a, from our standpoint is at, at what point in time uh, does it become a code enforcement issue, and we want to collapse that time down. So instead of it being a total of a 60-day process, that you know, maybe it's a you know, 10 days after you put out there, it's got to be moved out. So, but, but we need to do it just a little bit longer. We'll have that before you back at, at the June meeting. And what we just, just we just got to be careful that we're not putting a burden on the landlord to do something with the property they don't have the right to do anything with. That's the point we got to figure out. So we still talking about maybe those 90 days. No, well, from the, you know, what, I'm, what we're talking about is trying to evaluate if we, from the day that, that the contents of the home were put on the sidewalk and the maximum amount of time they're allowed, allowed to sit there before some action is taken is somewhere between my estimates to you know, try to figure out if we can do you know, seven to ten days as opposed to 30 full days after it's been put out. Mm -hmm. As Commissioner Hughes pointed out, the problem with it sitting out there for an extended period of time is you know, you got South Georgia weather between the heat and the rain and all that, 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 that whatever set out there can, uh, don't. begins to deteriorate almost immediately so then you end up with a pile of stuff that ends up being a pile of mush yeah. you know. or people coming by trying yeah. to see what they can get yeah. from it and they just scatter it everywhere yeah so i mean so we want to collapse that time we just want to make sure that, that we're not violating anybody's property rights so i just want to keep it up there that's all i Thank have you. mr chairman okay mr ronald okay mr wood Wood. Good. Mr. Astor. Yes. I would like to wish all ladies a happy Mother's Day. All ladies. Such a job. Such a job. There you go. Mr. Raymond. I'm just disappointed that somebody didn't try to appoint me to the aging board. <laughs> <laughs> so I anticipate the jokes well, don't I? We're taking <laughs> volunteers. We're taking volunteers. <laughs> well, we did. You don't remember? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> well, I, thought yeah. being, I thought he might be an emeritus. You know, what, is it, what are you getting to like? Emeritus. 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 Show that you think. That's all. Miss Donahue. Mr. News. If you all was wondering where that prayer came from, <laughs> I missed out on doing the National Prayer Day. Got tied up at work. <laughs> But our chairman stepped in for me, so he he allowed me to do that. <laughs> That's where that came from. It was a little longer than you. Uh, it was very good. It Thank was you. a good one, though. Thank you. That's all I have, sir. Okay. And speaking of National Day of Prayer, I appreciate the three commissioners and our county clerk that got to attend. I know some of you the schedules doesn't allow that, but I just think the ones that did get to go. And speaking of that, we'd like to give you a special invitation to the county picnic. Tuesday week, tomorrow week, so at 12 o'clock at Black Shank. Um, if you can come, there again, no some of you can, but if you happen to be in town or can come, I know it would mean a lot to our staff and administration if the commissioners can come, so appreciate that. All right, anybody has anything else? We'll go. Take a motion to adjourn. So <laughs> <laughs> have a second? Thank you, man. Thank you. Second. Okay. Give it to the commissioners. You say it all in favor. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.
That was done. Yeah. Oh, got it there, man. Got yeah. Work, yeah. Working documents. That's, that's, that's the biggest mistake you've ever made. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you very much. That's good. Thank you all so much.